busted. Hello and thanks for staying with us. Welcome to Political Platform. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Uh, the nation was jolted over the weekend when Teofilos Danjuma, former uh, Minister of Defense and former Chief of Army Staff, raised a grave allegation against the Nigerian military. He accused them of siding with headsmen uh, in the killings of farmers across the country and he asked Nigerians and called upon them to defend themselves. What is wrong with the Nigerian military? In 2014, uh, Muritala Nyako, uh, then uh, governor of uh, Adamawa State, raised uh, similar allegations against not just the military but the government of Good Luck Jonathan, who he said is using the Boko Haram to decimate uh, northern Nigeria. So uh, these uh, allegations are not new. But from the Inspector General of Police, we are seeing a different, a different uh, a narration and statements as to uh, the fate of Lydia Sharibu, the uh, single uh, school girl from Dapchi that is still in Boko Haram captivity. He first told journalists that uh, the girl is on her way back, but the spokesperson of the Nigerian police uh, just within hours came out to give a contrary uh, statement saying the IG never said that. Mm -hmm. On today's edition, we shall be probing, probing into uh, the problem with the Nigerian military. We will take a look at the security architecture in the country. We will be speaking with the retired provost marshal of the uh, Nigerian military. And also, the Northern uh, Leaders Forum has accused uh, leaders in Northern Nigeria of uh, not doing enough to alleviate poverty and increase the welfare of uh, people of Northern Nigeria. They said they have collectively failed I will be speaking with uh, one of their spokespersons, Dr. Yuma Sen, for his perspective. My colleagues are, are with me in the studio, Full House. Adibaya Bodere is uh, here with me. Um, I will see two issues. Uh, the, the continued detention of, uh, I mean, continue stay in captivity of uh, that little girl, mm -hmm. uh, Leah, is uh, something that the government has given, prom uh, the president gave a promise. And I do hope they will fulfill it because, like uh, Dr. Akintola said, the of the Muslim uh, right of Muslim right concern rights, uh, Murik uh, said is that we should not allow a situation where uh, we did, we throw a dangerous trend where the country will be divided along religious line. I think it's a, uh, it's a, the president should be applauded because he gave a firm promise, and we are expecting action from him. Um, the the statement of uh, T.Y. Danjuma and the reactions and all the rest, I think government is to be in a, should, should, should handle the issue maturely in such a way that we don't have deep implications or coming after that statement because it's a very, very witty statement. Coming from a very big person, Teofilos uh, uh, Danjuma. Some say he has been involved in all the coups in Nigeria. He understands the military so well. He rose to the highest office in the military, and when he speaks, uh, uh, he should be speaking uh, the truth. But some say uh, he is part of the problem. Udwe J is also uh, on, in the studio with us. Amichi, whatever it is, I think that the authorities at every point in time should handle issues, particularly issues that handle uh, that bother on the security of lives and property in such a way that no Nigerian will be left in doubt that he or she matters to the nation because these kind of uh, 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 talks would arise from feelings of, you know, being uh, marginalized or feelings that uh, maybe the authorities tend to be taking sides. It, it, it's not really right. 
That's why at every point in time, every Nigerian must be given a sense of belonging. And not just a sense of belonging, uh, every other security agency and government uh, must not only be neutral, but must seem to be neutral. I think uh, the second aspect must be seen to be neutral is very uh, strategic and important. The perception must be uh, that the security agencies are neutral. It builds confidence with the people and it helps to uh, prevent uh, conflicts. Uh, well, uh, some of my other colleagues are here. Hey, Jemma Samo is the poly in the studio. Thank you, Amichi. I want to tell the line of uh, what um, the Minister of Information said over the weekend when he said uh, we should be non-partisan uh, with the issue of security. Uh, I know it's election, pre-election year, but I still think politicians should be careful the way they use uh, uh, this kidnapping and insurgency issue to campaign for 2019. Uh, we should all know that, uh, let all of us know that uh, uh, this time we should be our brother's keeper. Uh, put aside your political party, put aside every other thing. Let's work together as Nigerians and try and uh, uh, follow one course that we need security in the country. But it baffles me to know uh, that even uh, well, before the 2015 election, in 2014, we also had this similar uh, problem. And now in 2018, we're also experiencing uh, a very, very terrible uh, security breach. They're, they're kidnapping children in schools, and they're kidnapping uh, uh, people in their communities, and uh, uh, the crisis. We should think further and try as much as possible to find a solution to end this uh, demon. Well, our guest analyst, uh, our colleague, our friend, uh, the Chief Press Secretary too, uh, the Governor of Delta State, Zephanyu Koa, is in town, and as, as usual, he makes our time to join us on the program. Thank you very much, Amichi. Good morning, listener. While growing up and even up to the present day, we are told that uh, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. But it does appear that in this part of the world, the taste is far becoming more from uh, the aroma rather than what the tongue tells you. It does appear that the nose is the one interpreting uh, the taste. How do I mean? If you look at the issue of whether government is uh, satisfying the aspirations of the people, as clearly stated in section, 20, section 14, Subsection 2, paragraph B of the Constitution, which makes it very clear that security of the, and welfare of the people is the primary purpose of government. You will understand that um, those who are in charge uh, believe that it's more of talking rather than the action on ground. The views expressed by the elder statesman, um, the, the person of um, T.Y. Danjuma, uh, does appear that uh, frustration in the land is uh, seriously being democratized, and in which case it's moving from the realm of the the law in the society to touch all those who are also on top. Like that movie that we watch in those days, say the rich also cry. It does appear that the rich is crying and the tear is flowing very, very uh, fast to the extent that uh, the land is shaking on account of that. But what is most important is that um, it sounds nice for people to defend themselves, but I don't think it's going to be a wonderful option. It, so. it, it behooves on government to indeed intensify effort with a view to reducing the amount of loss of faith that does appear to be pervading the length and breadth of this country. Once we regain confidence and faith in the people, I don't think anybody can challenge us or ask us to uh, take up arms and defend ourselves because we lack the capacity in the first place to defend ourselves. Well, the interchanges uh, between uh, the presidency, uh, talking of the vice president and uh, the former president, good luck, Jonathan, over allegations that monies were hurriedly withdrawn, amounting to billions uh, just before 2015 election has continued. Uh, if you recall, the vice president raised the allegation recently, and the former president, Gulo Jonathan True, a uh, spokesperson, challenged him to uh, come up with evidence and name names. Well, presidency sources told journalists uh, yesterday that they have evidence and tried to explain how 100 billion naira was moved from the vault of the CBM to the Asura Presidential Villa, Abuja, where the then president. A good luck, Jonathan was residing, and they don't understand what he did with the money. It will continue. Don't be surprised you see the former president's uh, uh, reaction today. But I ask if all these evidences have been secured, if all the uh, details have been known, what is stopping prosecution? Is former president good luck, Jonathan immune from prosecution? Can this government prosecute him and get this matter resolved? Well, these are the big questions. Let's take your mails and analysis. Welcome to the mail segment. I am Ife Ngawobi. No, I am Itenikan Atipu. You're welcome. Let's begin with latest comments on security issues in Nigeria and reacting to General T.Y. Danjuma's statement, Amechi Ohiriako in Ogwa, Lagos State, says 
The recent comment on national television by an elder statesman and one of the generals, the generals that shaped Nigeria's destiny cannot be ignored. General T.Y. Danjuma is known to be a man of few words, and when he speaks, his words bear so much power. He accused the Nigerian army of being biased in the ongoing killings in Taraba and Benue Valley. He is not the first to make such a huge allegation against the Nigerian army. Amnesty International did say, concerning the unprofessional attitude of most of our soldiers, it's time for the president to reorganize the entire security apparatus of the Nigerian state to give the citizens a sense of security. And more reactions, Chinidu Amno CK in Abuja says, Concerning the statement credited to General T.Y. Danjima retired on the complicity of the Nigerian army in the ongoing senseless killings in the land, I do not agree with the general. I will appreciate it if the Nigerian army will rise up to its responsibilities, prove to skeptics that this bloodletting can and should be put to an end, and the perpetrators brought to justice, just like that of IPO and other issues that have threatened the corporate existence of Nigeria. God bless our country. Staying with security issues, Noel Eruoto in Kubo Abuja says, I want to disagree with President Muhammad Buhari's plan to grant the dreaded Boko Haram sect amnesty. I want to ask, what is the justification for the proposed amnesty? Are they fighting a just cause to deserve this amnesty? How will the families of victims of this dreaded sect see it? Will it be fair to them? How will Nigeria as a nation be looked upon by the international community? These and many others are begging for answers. And the President's Cabinet, Okwe John in Abuja, says Mr. President should reshuffle his cabinet and inject fresh minds if he wants to be re-elected. The present crop of ministers lack ideas on governance and should pave way for those with digital minds to turn our economy around for development. The situation whereby many of them add no value to the system is appalling. God help Nigeria. That's all we can take on today's meal segment. We'll keep it coming with your name and where you're writing us from to political platform at yahoo.com. Thank you so much uh, for remaining with us. Uh, let's go right away and welcome uh, uh, retired Brigadier General Bowen Idada, former Proverb Smasher of the Nigerian Army. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, uh, thank you. So, uh, how, how do you react to uh, the uh, allegations against the military of taking sides? Uh, it didn't start today. The last one coming from uh, uh, T.Y. Danjuma. Uh, it appears that there's a problem uh, with the way uh, we are managing our military. Minister of Defense for most of the regime of uh, General Obama. 
So, uh, and this kind of trend has continued over the years, uh, from one successive government, the one from one government to another. So, the successive, all successive governments of the country have kind of inspired the idea of using the military even for routine uh, 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 in, uh, system of security in progress. Um, sometimes it's difficult to draw a line between what is purely internal security and what is what's supposed to be uh, a state of war. And what you have to admit, the truth is that uh, this trend of using the military, you know, uh, the way we have been using the past uh, several years since we return to democracy. You're quite right. Uh, you're quite right because uh, there are so many military operations across the country. We don't know whether he has done so.
right. Uh, let, let, let's also take this question. Uh, uh, General, if, if you take the next question from my colleague, please. Do, do you not see uh, General uh, T.Y. Danjuma as uh, a man in pains because of the kind of killings uh, currently going on in Taraba State? I said, do you not see General T.Y. Danjuma as a man in pains? No, she, she's trying to ask whether you've not uh, seen uh, uh, Dan Juma uh, as a man who is in pain, uh, flowing from the killings going on across the country, and he has no other option than to publicly raise these allegations. Yes, uh, we agree with you. We agree with you quite all right. It is not new. Even the Amnesty International accused the Air Force of uh, bombing uh, civilians uh, recently. But how do we? Your standpoint is that we intend to overexpose the military to internal, probably civil security challenges. How do we begin to? Uh, In 1982-83, uh, the, the Shagari government then attempted to strengthen the police to empower them in such a way that they can, they can handle civil disturbances across the country. But with the change of government that followed towards the tail end of 83, that program was discarded. Now, with benefit, with benefit of insight, how do we strengthen the police in such a way that most of these duties being performed by the military now can effectively be handled by the police? That uh, uh, General T. Y. Danjuma, being the uh, chairman of the Northeast Committee, uh, is aware of so many things, and he can no longer keep it. That's why he came out openly to uh, uh, say what he said well, over the weekend. Well, yeah, my, my, the point I made was the, the general is very, very uh, big
will not be taken lightly. Uh, we, we, we have to thank you so much uh, for uh, giving us your time. Thank you very much. Idada uh, is a retired brigadier general and former provost uh, marshal of the Nigerian Army. Uh, he concludes that uh, the exposure of the military to internal security operation is one that uh, brings out uh, some uh, attitude we wouldn't expect. And of course, you know, they are not trained to handle such. Uh, these accusations have been on and on and on. And it may not stop except, uh, he, like he said, uh, we we'll ask the civil authority to do what their responsibility uh, challenges them to do and not to over expose the military. The much we can take on today's edition, thank you so much uh, for being part of it. Please uh, drop some lines. Uh, what do you think of uh, the statements of uh, General Raidada and some other sundry developments across the nation? On behalf of my colleagues, my name is Amit Chanapur. Busted! <laughs>